All right, welcome to class in School of Advanced Studies. My name is Scott McAdoo, I'm assistant principal here, IB coordinator, and I am absolutely delighted to talk to you guys. This is always one of my very favorite times to be able to see all the new recruits, the new incoming uh, students that feed what I consider uh, one of the greatest schools, certainly in the state, and then uh, definitely one of the best educations you'll get uh, in the country. Uh, as you guys know, our school is composed of two major areas. We're the IB major, which is the International Baccalaureate Program, and then we have the Visual and Performing Art House, and we call them houses sometimes, just figuratively, uh, it helps to kind of umbrella all the things that we do. And so in the visual and performing art, you guys are probably aware that there are eight or nine different things that fall underneath that category. But we have one mission. Our mission at class and is spoken every day on the opening announcements. Every student hears our mission every single day. And that's to ensure that all students become high quality, academically prepared global citizens. That mission is divided into three parts, high quality, academically prepared, global citizens. One of the things that we focus on whenever we do things and plan things and, and come up with ideas for what we want our programs to look like, we talk about that mission. And we make sure the things we do fall in underneath one of those three areas, and preferably more than one, if not all. So real briefly, I want to explain what each of those mean. When I talk about high quality, I, ha I have already in my mind that the groups of students that we ask to come to class in already are pretty close to meeting that criteria. We can tell by looking at your applications and looking at the types of students you are and knowing the types of parents that we traditionally have that the students we bring in are high quality. They have character. Our IB program has a learner profile that's defined, that defines 10 key characteristics. For example, we want our students to be reflective. We want our students not just to hear what's on page 537 of a science text, but to reflect on things they learn daily and to adjust what they think as they go throughout their class and experience as such, that by the time they leave our school and graduate and move on to greater things, they are fully functioning students who are reflective learners and can think at a very high level. Academically prepared probably speaks for itself. Here, academically prepared focus specific, focuses specifically on college preparation. Academically prepared doesn't mean necessarily this student meets the minimum state criteria. Your student's going to take end of instruction exams, just like every school in, this, in the state. Your student will take CRTs or OCCTs. You guys probably are familiar with that terminology. Uh, your students take these tests. They're standardized tests. While our state mandates that we participate in these exams, our focus is more on the Explore Plan ACT continuum. And if you're not completely familiar with that, you certainly are familiar with the ACT exam. That's our premier college um, prep exam, and when I say prep, when you take that exam, colleges look at that, and that's how they determine your preparedness to enter into their school. And with that said, the Explore test is a middle school test that our students take, plan, our students take in the high school years, and then finally the ACT. And these three exams are a continuum that demonstrates your preparedness. So that's a focus. When I say that's our focus, that's why you see up on the screen that we are so incredibly proud of the improvements that our students have made over the previous three to four years. When you see the state ACT composite, and when you see our district's ACT composite, it is incredibly difficult to change that composite score, that average composite, very hard. And so when you see just a one-point increase then I say that's a point for celebration. And I give a lot of that credit to the incredible students that we have here at Classen, and that we're going to continue tradition with you here this, this evening. Finally, global citizenry. When I talk about global citizens, you hear the word global and you think uh, China, Pakistan, India. I think, I think those things, but I also think our neighborhood. 
I also think more Oklahoma. I also think things much closer to home. What kind of a student do we ask your student to become? The kind that is willingness, uh, willing and capable to use their skills, their talents to help in their local community. That's who we are. In a nutshell, those three things define our, uh, uh, who we are and our mission. And so everything you hear and everything you kind of feel and start to learn about class, and I always want you to know that's our goal, is to end up as senior student and have your student end up as a senior meeting those three components. And with that said, I'm going to introduce to you Mr. Glenn Jean. He's going to talk about uh, a couple of things and introduce you to some of the folks this evening. The goal of this evening is to provide you an initial look at some of the things that you'll need to know. Will I be an expert sixth grade parent after this evening? Maybe not. But I definitely want myself to have some knowledge and give me the, some of the things that I need to take that next step on into the summer. Okay? With, I'll see you in just a little bit when we talk about uniforms. But without further ado, Mr. Glenn Jean. Thank you. Gotcha. As you said, I'm Liz Jean. I am the middle school counselor. Uh, here I have 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, so a lot of you have gotten the opportunity to, if you've got older students, to be uh, with me for a while. Uh, tonight, we're going to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do. We're going to start with Mrs. Petty, who's going to talk about our uh, uh, supplies. And then we're going to go to the teachers, and they're going to talk about the packets. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, Mr. Fryer here to talk about the website. And Mr. Mike is going to come back and talk about uniforms. Uh, if you have questions, we're going to have a question and answer session after that. So if you, if you have a question, please you know, feel free to ask us. We're going to try to get this over with about a, by 7, because we have people that need to be at other appointments uh, from there. So without further ado, this is uh, Cassie Page. She is a computer, pro computer teacher, but she's also a parent of a string student. So if you have a strings question, she can really help you out. I, I have to correct it just a little bit because my daughter could be listening. She's a piano major. <laughs> but she's been in strings since sixth grade. So I can answer piano questions and strings questions. And he failed to say that she's also in the jazz band, so I can answer a few jazz band questions. So I'm um, very active as a parent. I do teach fundamentals of technology and also desktop publishing and graphic design. That class puts together a really cool magazine, online magazine that you can find on our website. But I'm not here to talk about me or my kids. I'm here to talk about BPA. BPA is Business Professionals of America. It's a high school organization that your child will be in when they're in my class. They'll all come through my class because I'm the only computer teacher. They have to have a computer class to graduate, so they'll be seeing me. Um, it's a lot of fun. BPA is a great organization, um, and we do one fundraiser a year, and this is it. We put together school packets for your incoming sixth graders. Also, other students have figured this out, that those supplies work well for other grades. We have two choices. One has eight binders and dividers. That's pack one. That's $60 before July 1st. The second pack does not have the binders or dividers, and that pack is really popular with repeat customers because the binders last for a couple years. So either way, um, you support BPA. We would love to help you out there. It's about $100 worth of product. We throw in some surprises for the kids too, and then you will pick them up on the 30th of July at Camp Comet. They'll be all ready and bundled up. We'll have them in a nice, really cool bag, and you'll get to take them home, okay? So if you have any other questions, if you want to pay tonight, some of you already have, and thank you so much uh, from me and my officers. I've got BPA officers out there if you want to visit with them. Um, if you want to mail it in, please do. Email me if you're doing that so I know to watch for it because I'm in and out all summer. And if you have any other questions, let me know. And I will pass it on to, who's next, Mr. Jean? The next person first we're going to talk to will be our four core teachers. And I'm going to start with the lady in the group, Ms. Barnett. She is our science teacher. So Ms. Barnett will come forward. <coughs> okay, that's fine. You probably need to turn the pages. So first is language arts. It is math and science. I'm not 
sure um, how science is going as of this school year in fifth grade, but in sixth grade, we start out with skills and learning how to use science equipment. So it's the first experience for a real, actual science environment. But before they start the skills, there are several things that they need to master. So what you will see, I mean, it's a summer enrichment assignment overview. The first thing is a gizmo. Gizmos are an interactive uh, type assignments online. Uh, I minimize that to just the ones that they will need to know and be familiar with the first day of school for the first lab. And the first lab is determining density. So they've got to know how to use a graduate <coughs> cylinder and how to use a triple beam balance. So that's the first two. Then I put in one to let me know what they're doing as far as how they're thinking, how they can organize, and that's called the pattern finder. Those are the first four gizmos that you'll see. Density, triple beam balance, measuring volume, and pattern finder. To be able to use the gizmo, and to do that is an online assignment, you will need to have a flash player on your computer. If you have difficulty, and I know we have problems with Mac, you will have to contact the company and then they will tell you what to do. They'll follow through and help you determine what the problem may be. But again, if you do have problems with the students working on the gizmos during the summer, you can also try the public library. Uh, and if there's still a problem, you email me and we will work on that the first few days of school as well. So do not panic, first thing. They must email me at Linda Taylor Barnett, and it's on there, so that they can have a password and a username. Once they get the username and password, then they'll be able to go online and start the gizmo. It's an interactive. Uh, there are some steps to doing the gizmo. I will post those steps for you online, which is on my webpage. But it's a real simple process. They must do the student explorations before they do the test assessments. So it's kind of nice because most of the students like it because it's using the computer. So do not allow them to spend one hour working on the gizmo. Let them do 10 minutes. Save it on your desktop. Go back and forth. Uh, it's very difficult sometimes when they get started, they want to keep going. But please don't allow them to work for an hour at a time. The next assignment is the science vocabulary. There are 25 words that I've selected that they should have been exposed to during the elementary school up until fifth grade. If not, that's okay. But make sure they define the words using science definitions. When they come to school, that first two weeks of school, we'll go to the library and we'll start library research, where we research the science vocabulary terms. And then they put together PowerPoint, and they learn how to use destiny. Destiny is a resource that we use at Classroom, and it helps them learn how to find information. It will prepare them for the science project topic. They must have a topic that they would like to research and do an experimentation that is related to any area of science. It can be life, earth, or physical. It's their choice. So we'll start that. That's the process of scientific method. And we will be doing vocabulary cards. So when they get the vocabulary cards, it will tell them to put the word on one side and the definition on the back side. Three and a half by five cards. Let them do them in pencil. Uh, we do use a lab notebook, and I don't know if Ms. Peggy's going to order the lab notebooks, but I found that they still write large, so it's kind of hard to write on the graph paper. So we're going to use 8.5 by 11 quad. And I went to Staples, and they have that, but she will order the graph paper as well. And then we're going to compile our lab notebooks. And that would be a lot easier. They would probably get more excited about doing that. But it's real difficult to get them to write on quad graph paper. Sometimes they use four lines, four quads to write one word. So we have to work on that. But now, by the end of school year, like May, the students are doing so much better. But again, I want them to get the experience of application of information and not memorizing facts. So it's hands-on uh, and skill-based. 
So if you have any questions, please email Linda Taylor Barnett at cox.net. Thank you. Now we will have Mr. Chafin. You ready? Chafin, you're next. Well, this is our uh, English teacher, language arts teacher, Mr. Neil Chafin. I want to thank you all for sending your children to class in. Uh, Mr. McAdoo said that this is one of the best schools in the, this, in, the, in the state. I disagree. It is the best. We do more than anybody else in the state, and we're right up there nationally recognized with everybody. Uh, I teach regular and honors English classes. Uh, 33 years as a teacher. I'm a charter member of the faculty here. A uh, military veteran. And... I have a grandson who I'm very proud of. Uh, you have the reading uh, material there for the summer. I've eliminated a couple of things that I've used in past years because they were too difficult to obtain. Uh, the novels that you see there are very easy to obtain, and I think every one of the others is actually available online for free. All you have to do is Google it and dig through two or three sites, and you can find it uh, to read online. Um, my expectations are that your students work hard, that they don't give up, that they try again, that they try again. All of us fail at things. Uh, the key to that is getting up and doing it again. I come in early every day. I stay late every day. If your students need to do that, I'm there for them. I'm not like, locked away in my classroom. Do what it takes. <laughs> Eliminate distractions. Uh, don't overcommit. It's better to do a few things well than a lot of things badly. Uh, Classing is a serious commitment on time, on work, on effort, on concentration. I teach the regular and honors English classes. Uh, a lot of the material is the same. Those of you who have older children here know about the packets. It's all self-contained. You will know what your student has to do during a particular lesson packet and how long the student has to do it. Uh, you, your student is not going to have to schlep two or three extra text, textbooks along. Even the instructional material is there uh, in the packet. I don't like those things very much. I will contact you on a frequent basis. Uh, about every two weeks I will send out routine emails about students who are having difficulties. Uh, your student has God forbid a D in my class uh, based on uh, homework or test scores. And that way you know it's very, very important that you get an email in on SmartWeb, which is our online grading and, and uh, email. And, and that way it makes it very easy for you to contact me, for me to contact you. I check my email a dozen or more times a day here at school, NJ Chafin or, or NEJ Chafin. I think both of them will get me. And also at home, when I get home, which is NJC, NJC at People PC, I strongly suggest that when you email me that you send it to both, and that way I can do it whether I'm at home or uh, I'm here at work. Make sure that you get the smart web thing going. Uh, my syllabus is on teacher web. If you go to my website in Oklahoma City, there is a link that sends you to teacher web. If you Google teacher web, all you have to do is follow the instructions and you'll find my syllabus. My syllabus will be undergoing some considerable revision this summer in order to bring it into line with the core curriculum standards. So, you know, bear with me for a while on that. Uh, it is difficult, it is demanding. I give chance after chance after chance. 74% of my students this year made an 80% or better on the CRPs. Almost 93% met or exceeded the uh, objectives. We can do it. Thank you for coming here. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce my favorite subject, uh, civics and history, Mr. John Wells.
Hi, my name is John Wells, and I am your child, your student's uh, social studies teacher. And if you look at the handout, or if you turn to the part that talks about social studies, okay, turn to the part that uh, looks or that uh, talks about social studies. You'll see that in the first paragraph. Uh, the name of the course is World Studies, and in World Studies we cover the Western Hemisphere and we cover Europe and Russia. Then when they get into the seventh grade, they concentrate on the Eastern Hemisphere, and then eighth grade is U.S. History. Uh, the main thing, or not, uh, I'm sorry, not the main thing, but in addition to working on this, we also do a lot of work in National History Day. And if you don't know what National History Day is, about the best way I can compare it is it's similar to in science when you do science fair, only the emphasis is on history. And some of you guys have been exposed to this and have done this before. Um, the good thing about National History Day is that they assign you a theme every year, and then within that theme, your children, your, our students have to pick out their own topic and they have to pick out something that they want to actually do research on. And then once they choose their topic, so they're choosing their own topic, once they choose their topic, then they go out and they do research on that topic. And then once they do research, then they compile all the research that they've done and put it together in a logical and systematic, you know, format so that they can give a report and then they actually present their findings to their classmates, to their peers, and to uh, you know me and if their judges when they uh, participate in History Day. And this isn't something. This is you know this is really important because uh, those steps that they work on to do that that can transfer and that can go on. They can use that uh, all the way through their academic career. And they can even use that, you know, on into on into life. And so, there. The main thing I want them to do this summer is to please get a National History Day rule book, so that we can start out uh, once school starts and use and get familiar with that rule book. This uh, first page that looks like this, it has the website, and you can go to that website and you can print off that rule book. If uh, you're having trouble with a printer or have uh, other problems, you know, with your computer or whatever, with your internet, you can get, uh, you can borrow somebody's copy and make a copy of it, but somehow get a copy so that we can start off talking about that, uh, you know, right off when school starts. This year, if you read the second paragraph, uh, out of all the sixth graders, and we start off we have a school-wide competition, out of all the sixth graders, we had 25 that went on to the district level competition, and that's just in the sixth grade. And then out of those 25, we had nine that went on to the state level and competed at state level. So that's a pretty good deal. That's a, you know, pretty good for the sixth grade. And let's see, there's one other thing I wanted to talk to you about is my information is all on there. It says John Wells got my uh, phone number. There's my email address. And if you have any questions about this, you know, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email. If you have any problems or any questions, get in your rule book or, you know, read through this. So that's about all I have. Appreciate it. And last but not least, everybody's favorite subject. Nah. Yeah. This is our new teacher this year. Uh, Mr. Shark, Aaron Shark. Hi, Mr. Shark. I teach uh, sixth grade math and sixth grade honors math. I also coach the Math Pounds team, which is a national uh, college mathematics competition for uh, middle school uh, students specifically. Uh, we also Take part in a number of other uh, mathematics competitions. So, uh, so that's my thing.
Um, a little bit about me. Um, my background is primarily as a performer, a uh, musical theater performer. I lived in New York City for about 10 years, um, acting, uh, mostly doing musical theater, uh, regional theater, national tours, that kind of thing. Um, my wife is a professor of musical theater at OU, which is what the broad is here. So um, I understand what it is to be an artist. I understand the artist's journey. Um, I know where you're coming from. I know where you want to go. I understand what your commitments are and what you, uh, what you think is important. Um, at the same time, I was also a math jock in my school. Um, I took part in a lot of state and you know, regional and local math uh, competitions. I was a national merit scholar. Um, I have a deep and abiding love for math. I play math games and do math puzzles in my spare time. I think it's interesting. I think it's exciting. I try very hard to pass that along. I love seeing in, in uh, kids' faces that they feel the same way, and I see that at this school. Um, I love this school, and it's the students that, uh, that make me love this school. Um, yeah, I, 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 I could go down that, that road for a while, but um, I, I feel a real sense of responsibility for the, for the kids of the school, because I know how hard you're going to be here, and I know, uh, I know what it means uh, for you to be here. Um, so I try to, think, I try to uh, blend those two sides of my life. Um, in terms of mathematics education, I think math has another art form. Uh, math is the art of ideas. Um, we can you know, write all these numbers up on the board, we can do all this computation, we can do all this stuff, but at the end of the day, none of that really exists. It's really all just you know, thoughts in our head, and we can write them down, but they're not really there. It's really just ideas. And the job of a young mathematician is to find what is your relationship to those ideas? How do you interact with these ideas? How do they make sense? to you, I tell my kids that all the time. Um, here's one way of doing this, here's another way of doing this, not you, and which is the best way? The way that makes sense to you, the way that, that you can replicate, the way that, that you can do it every time, and find your personal relationship with these ideas. I think that's what a, a mathematics education um, is all about, um, you know, logical uh, thinking and you know, logical thought processes and uh, how to approach problem solving and things like that. Um, but where you largely develop that relationship with these ideas is doing your homework, I'm sorry to say. Um, I know, I felt like it was pointless to do the homework. I understood the stuff. Why, why do I have to do 20 of these problems? I knew how to do it from, from the first problem. Why do I have to keep doing it? Because you do the first three, the first four, and you're doing it exactly the way the teacher told you to do it. And then when you get to number five, number six, you start to develop your relationship with these ideas. Say, oh, wait, I can do this faster, or I can do this better, or oh, I can actually do this instead. So the homework, while it may seem at times uh, tedious, uh, there actually is a purpose to it. Um, it allows you the chance to find your own personal relationship um, with the ideas and the concepts that we cover in class. So I would say absolutely stay on top of your homework. Um, that's the big thing that I see. The kids who turn in all their homework on time, completed, do well on the tests, do well in the class, um, and have a great time. The kids who start to fall behind um, don't get the practice with the ideas, and they don't have a firm understanding of the ideas, and then they start to struggle with the quizzes and with the tests, and their grade starts to slip, and then they start getting stressed. And we don't want to go down that road. Um, you did a lot of work to, to be here, and this should, while this is an education, and yes, it's serious, it's also a lot of fun because the the people you're going to be surrounded by are amazing, and the, uh, the support you will receive um, is incredible. Um, incredible. Anyway, um, as to my packet, um, it's a relatively straightforward sixth grade math. We're still focusing uh, a lot on the mechanics of mathematics and uh, our multiplication, our long division, our decimals, our fractions, um, things like that. Um, the sixth grade honors, we get to have a little more fun, get a little more into, a, into concepts and we talk about uh, you know, negative numbers and, uh, and ratios and rates and all, all, sorts of, uh, all sorts of fun and interesting things. Um, there was actually a day in class when I had a student, we were discussing uh, negative numbers and the concept of infinity and one student asked, well, what's infinity divided by infinity? And I said, well, it depends because there are different kinds of infinity. And the kids sort of like jumped forward and said, oh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? They would not let me off the hook until I sort of explained how we can have different kinds of infinity. And we sort of talked about calculus for a few minutes. And uh, that's the kind of fun that we can have in uh, 
in the honors class, so we can really kind of get into some heavier concepts. Um, anyway, I can, I can go on. Um, so on my, uh, on my packet, the, the work is fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, again, we're focusing on uh, mechanics a lot in sixth grade. Um, in terms of practice, I've uh, included a, a bit.ly of my website, a little shortened version of my website. Um, that is a, a zero and a lowercase l. It is case sensitive and it's a little hard to read. I'm sorry about that. You can find it through the class and website as well. Um, I have a section of practice links that includes activities and games, um, on pretty much all the concepts that uh, are going to be covered throughout the year. Um, so you can look at those over the summer. Um, there's a great website called xpmath.com. There's a lot of like, two-minute drills, and it's all about um, seeing if you can get, uh, get your skills faster and more fluid. That's a great uh, practice site. Khan Academy uh, has wonderful videos and, uh, and activities, and these are things you can practice on uh, throughout the year. Uh, in addition, there's a, a site called uh, the Art of Problem Solving.com, AOPS.com. Um, they have some, there are a couple of activities called uh, Alchemist and For the Win, where you can play head to head competition with uh, math questions with other kids, and, and they will track your progress and give you increasingly difficult problems. So, those are really great things to do. That you could be working on over the summer. Um, another site called uh, Brilliant.org, uh, which has weekly challenges. It's primarily for high school students, but I think some of the easier problems um, you can probably handle at this age. There's a section called Practice that uh, deals with uh, breaks down factors, just kind of multiple, um, and it's more uh, basic concepts. Um, so I've got a list of those on my uh, on the sheet in your pack in your packet. I would strongly suggest looking at uh, some of these sites. Um, not just over the summer, but throughout the years, some really, uh, some really great stuff on that. I feel like there's one more point I want to make, but, uh, but it's eluding me right now. Um, so thank you so much for entrusting us with uh, with your children. Uh, we absolutely take this this responsibility very, very seriously. There's some wonderful teachers here and some wonderful students here, and uh, I'm very thrilled and thankful every day that I get to be part of it. Thanks for being here.
website for us. And he's going to go over some information about where you can get some information from. But he's also a parent here. And you get to with. Right. Thank you. Um, the first thing I want to say is this is a special place. Each and every one of you is a special person. And two of my three kids attend here, and we love it here. Every school has its challenges, and every school needs parent support. And we have a great PTSA, and I look forward to working with you in the year to come. Um, you should have received a color printout that talks about communication channels. And what I'd like to do is just uh, kind of go over those with you really quickly. I'm the chair this year of our communication subcommittee. And we have, I guess I'm understanding my videos, it's a big video. Uh, we have uh, created an, a new website this year that we're ready to roll out, which is classinsas.com. And so this is a news website that we're going to continue to use in the years ahead. We're actually working on some digital signage for the front of the building, and hopefully we'll get some in the cafeteria. And we have the opportunity for anybody to contribute um, to that website, and we have a team that will moderate the content. So that's the first website to bring to your attention. Um, the second website, um, I should have that. The second website is our news blast. Um, for any of you involved in any kind of school or organization, MailChimp is a great newsletter that's free when you have less than 2,000 subscribers. We have a little over 1,400 subscribers to our newsletter. It comes out usually once a week, sometimes more than once a week, and it is the best way to be in touch with what's happening with Classic. We have our archives available online, so when you go to classinsas.com, you can click News Blast, and you can look at the last 10 archives. All of them are actually available, but the first 10 are linked there. And you definitely want to subscribe to our News Blast. The third thing is our official website. And that website has lots of information about our school. It also has the official school calendar. And calendars are challenging, and we are um, working, as we have in the past, with our administration to try and just get the word out about what's going on, when. There's a lot happening in our school, and so it's challenging, and that's why we need more volunteers to help us with communications and other things. But that's where you'll find the calendar. Um, next is really two different tools. I don't know if you are a Facebook user or a Twitter user, but we have pages on both. And our Facebook actually includes more information than our Twitter, but we have them connected. And basically, we're trying to share our information in multiple places to make it easy for you and also to enable you to contribute when you hear about something or want to comment about something. You can do that on our social media sites. And so we have several members of our communications team that are administrators on our Facebook page and on our Twitter page as well. Um, you can also get mobile alerts on Twitter. I don't know if you know that, but the uh, Oklahoma City Foundation is live tweeting the board meeting right now, and uh, I've been looking at their live tweets that they're doing. And so we'll uh, share things as well uh, that way. There is a Yahoo group that has been going for a number of years here at Classen, and this is a parent um, administered and moderated group. This is not sponsored by the PTSA, but we definitely have lots of, of members of PTSA. There's about, I think, 450 parents that are a part of that group, and so you can sign up, and that group is not public, where the information we put on our news site and Facebook, that stuff is public. Um, the parent group is private, although whenever you put something online, you always need to, of course, think about somebody copying it or sending it out, but uh, we found carpools, for instance, through the Yahoo group before, um, when we lived in Edmond, before we moved to Oklahoma City, and um, it's, a, it's a good group to know about. How many of you have the mobile app for the district right now, downloaded on your iPhone or your Android phone? The Oklahoma City Public Schools has an application with a group called School Connect, and so you can search for School Connect in either the um, iTunes App Store or the Android Marketplace and download that. And then you'll just be able to select Classen. And if there are any other schools in the district that you'd like to get information, you can get into uh, teacher phone numbers, email addresses, and other things from that mobile app. And you can also get alert messaging. So when something happens, um, hopefully we won't have any elevator crises or anything like that. But you know, when stuff happens, we get alerted as parents. And that's one way that you can be alerted. You know, snow days, any any time that something's coming up and we need to get the word out, the school district uses their alert messaging. And so that's really good to know about. 
Um, we also have something called SmartWeb, and there's no way you'll want to click that link or type that link in. You'll want to click the link, but not type it that I have on that page. You can go to the Oklahoma City homepage uh, or the Class and Home page, and you'll click SmartWeb, and there are instructions that are on the SmartWeb page about how to register if you have trouble getting in, um, how you can get that situation resolved. And we check SmartWeb all the time. My son is a ninth grade IB major. My daughter's a seventh grade drama major. And they're checking you know, SmartWeb all the time, and we are too. So that's an important thing to know about. And then the last one is a text messaging uh, alert system that we're uh, using for PTSA this year. And this is going to be the first time to do that. This isn't the district's alert messaging. Uh, this is for us. And um, when we need to get the word out, we're not going to use this to, to spam you with tons of messages. But when we need to get the word out quickly, uh, text messaging is an awesome way to do that. And that's something else for you to know about. Any organization you're a part of selling is what we're using. And it's a free service that lets you have an unlimited number of subscribers. And you can have multiple moderators. And so it's a good way to uh, do different kinds of messaging. We're opting for the alert messaging. But if it's a smaller group, you can even do a group chat. And we did that with one of, the, one of my daughter's classes this year. And it was a great way for parents to be organized. We were you know, organizing meetings and things like that. So um, those are, are some of the resources. So we look forward to working with you. Um, again, my name is Wes Fryer. I'll be sticking around as well. We're going to put the video of this meeting up on YouTube and on our channel. So if you know someone who wasn't able to be here, they're at the board meeting or just had a conflict tonight, you can let them know that it will be available on our website. And we look forward to continuing to find uh, ways to tell the story of our school. This is a very special school, and we want the world to know about it. Because our kids are doing great things here, and the kids of Oklahoma City have the opportunity to do great things here. And uh, I know you're going to have a great year to come. So thanks for being here. We look forward to working with you in the year to come. All right, so if you will, real quick, and I won't belabor this, uh, take a look at the class in SAS school uniform printout. And then on the back of that is a fact, a frequently asked question, a set of questions that a few parents kind of helped us with. This, as you know, is the first year that we'll be uh, using uniforms, uh, a, a mandatory uniform policy. Uh, the district has uh, voted and adopted this earlier this spring, as you probably all know. And so all schools in our district will be use, using a uniform or wearing a uniform. And so we have designed a uniform policy, not unlike probably if you're from a school that wears a uniform, not unlike other uniform policies. And so if you will take a look real quick at the overview of this. I am not going line by line on this. Uh, you'll have plenty of time throughout the summer to work on this. And if you have any questions about things that you need to know in terms of shopping, uh, those are certainly things that we're going to be available all summer uh, to help you with. Okay, So if you will take a look at this. This is divided up in, in terms of boys and girls, slacks, skirts, shorts, dresses. And then you'll see the next section is the shirt section, which combines the boys and the girls. And you'll notice in all of those cases that it really helps to identify the specific colors. You'll notice on there that it mentions royal blue, and then in another place I believe it says navy blue. I couldn't tell you what the heck those two different colors are. And so I'm going to say kind of a dark blue, right? And we're going to go with that, okay? So it's not going to be a scenario where you come in and you have navy and it should have been royal. Too bad. you got to go home. Uh, we're going to be accommodating in as much as you see it listed here on this page, okay? One of the things that the administration, the staff will work on uh, certainly coming back to the beginning of school year is how do we want to implement this policy in terms of uh, identifying checkpoints at the beginning of the day and throughout the day to make sure that all students are adhering to the uniform policy. I just want to make sure you'll understand that we will adhere to the student code of conduct for Oklahoma City Public Schools in instances where we see a conflict with this policy. So if there is a point, and it will happen at this school, where students want to push boundaries and they will do it, and it will be adhere, we will adhere to that student code of conduct in a very consistent way. There will be no, you get this punishment, you get this punishment. We will uh, communicate that to the students at the beginning of the year in a student convocation, 
and it will be very clear, if you are not adhering to this, then this occurs, all right? Now, I noticed uh, we kind of talked about, I talked with a couple of parents about the frequently asked questions. If you'll turn over on the back real quick. You're experiencing, if you've never had uniforms, uh, this at the exact same time I am in terms of knowing about how to implement it to wear. My, my students, I have two uh, young girls, and they are not from a uniform school, and so this is completely new to me and, and our staff as it is to you. The thing I want you to look at, some of these frequently asked questions, I believe these actually come from Wilson Elementary. Really good questions. Um, it asks, asks about certain specific kinds, like what about Henley style shirts? Again, I don't have a clue what that is, but uh, we have a great set of resources of parents and uh, staff that will help us to make sure that we are all consistently applying this uniform policy. What I did want to do is to provide you opportunity to ask a couple of questions if you had any about this, knowing that you'll have all the time in the world all summer long to ask us here at the school. There will be somebody here all summer long to help address some specific questions. So if you got a really great deal at that store over there and you don't know if it kind of makes, uh, it makes its way into this, code, this policy, then you can certainly call up here. Are there any questions you have right now about this uniform policy? Again, the main thing I want to emphasize is we are going to adhere to this policy in the identical way that every school in the district uh, in, has implemented their policies. We're behind, the, uh, behind a little bit. Uh, a lot of schools have been wearing uniforms for years, and it works great. We anticipate that will be the case here as well. Any questions? All right. So that's your uniform policy. What, what's next? Any other general questions? A lot of information, a lot of great people have been up in front of you today, a lot of passionate teachers. You have some of the best, uh, I'll quit saying some, you have the best uh, teachers, the best parents, the best combination of everything, and, you, and, and while the building is not brand new, it's got what the kids call heart and spirit and soul and, and some other things, but it's a great building just the same. So you really got a great combination of everything great here at the, at the school. Any questions that you have from me or some of the staff? Yes, sir. Can you give us a quick overview of the Camp Comet? Okay, so the review, his question is to review the Camp Comet. I don't have a specific answer about that at this time. Do you, Glenn, do you have anything, information on that? That's going to be July 30th, 8 a.m. And what it will be is the meter by me here. We'll go over the program with the parents and the students. And the parents will leave at 9. And the students will go and stay until noon. We'll walk them around. We'll get them their schedules. We'll uh, have other students show them where to go. Um, like places like where's the gym, where's the bathroom, where's the cafeteria. And then we'll serve them lunch. And they'll get a planner and a t-shirt and get an opportunity to meet with uh, other students. You know, just coming in. At least you can have somebody tell the first day of school you're not totally lost. And again, that question was about Camp Com. July 30th? July 30th. Uh, Mr. Fryer spoke about all the great communication tools uh, that we'll use, and certainly that will be communicated through those through, through several, one or more of those uh, tools. No other questions? Yes? Does this school have any plans to offer the Chinese language program? The question is, does this school have any plans to offer a Chinese language program? Correct? Uh, great question, and we've looked in the past at partnerships with uh, different colleges. For example, I worked with uh, OU two years ago on a specific program. And the challenges we will always run into, uh, specifically regarding our master schedule and what we can fit inside our, our schedule. Now, I think you're talking about a formal course, a Chinese course. You know, uh, you may not know that we've added Latin in the past couple of years. We traditionally have German, uh, French, and Spanish. Those are your primary three you'll see. We've included Latin in that offering in the past couple of years. We really work to do those things, and the challenges are in the schedule. If and when we see that a number of students want that, and then we have the resources to accommodate that, we always have, in, in class and has a tradition of including these unique opportunities for students, always has. Uh, there's a lot of things that you'll see here that you don't get anywhere else. 
uh, speaking to that, I can also talk about, in addition to the great uh, job that four core are going to do, that's four classes your, your sixth grade student will have. You'll also have four more. We're on the A block. I think most people may know that. If you're not familiar with that A block, it's four blocks a day, first period, second, third, and fourth, and that's A day, and then you come back and, and then you'll be B day for the next four. And so those four teachers over there will be, uh, your student will see those probably every day, and then you'll also have that series of electives depending on what your program is. That's the uniqueness of classing is that we have students who are, I, while they're IB students, they become brilliant guitarists. I mean, I've got a, I had an IB student the other day who was a sophomore, and I didn't know she played piano, and she was just messing around with the piano down there. I know her, her academic uh, preparedness is at the top. She is a great IV student, and then I heard her playing piano, and I was like, what the heck, where'd you learn to do that? You don't, get those, you don't get those opportunities anywhere else, here you do. And that's amazing. And so as you start to talk about to your kids about what do you want from this school, I think Mr. Sharp uh, tapped into some of that. Um, I always say, grades are important, and this is my taking a little bit too much extra time, but it's really important kind of a moment. Grades are really important, and as a mom and a dad, I of three do want to make sure my students' grades are as high as possible, but I want you to understand that when they walk out of here and they're in the job sector and they're in uh, past that post-secondary environment, when they get out there and get a job, there's no more grades. There's no more A, B, C, D, F. It's all about skill or concept mastery. Can they take the information that Mr. Sharp teaches them in that math class and utilize it in a unique, different way? Now, you guys, segueing into Common Core Standards, understand that that's what Common Core Standards' focus will be. Welcome to class, and who is saying thank you for finally designing a set of standards in the Common Core Standards that accommodate a lot of things that we have been doing for a long time, in that we want our students to become inquirers. We want them to take A, B, and C pieces of knowledge and create something completely different and new in D. We don't rely on page 164 of the social studies text to say, this is everything you ever need to know about blank. When I taught biology here in anatomy and physiology, I told students, listen, I'll teach you about albino tigers. That textbook will show you right there. There's everything you need to know about albino tigers. But in reality, isn't there a bunch more? Yes, the answer is yes, and that's kind of what we hope to do. Well, I get off on that soapbox just like Mr. Shark does. I, I'm glad he, he and I are kindred spirits and that we can just ramble off on, on a heartbeat. So I will shut up. I didn't answer your question at all. However, I did tell you the context in which we make decisions, and I hope that's good enough for now. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Did you not think I was going to call you? All right, you think of it, and then I'll get back with you, okay? Another question, guys. Anybody else? Yes. How many students were accepted for six? How many students are accepted for sixth grade? Traditionally, it's uh, the sixth grade is the entry point, as you know. That's where we replenish the stock, so to speak. Uh, sixth graders matriculate to seventh grade. And so we'll take anywhere from 120 to 5 to 130, all the way up to 150, 160, based on program need. There are different needs that the VPA program needs from a year-to-year -year basis. And so this year, while we ask a certain number of students to come, they don't all come. Every, you know, there's a whole bunch of people, 400 people who all apply, but we know they're not all intending to come here, even though they may have been accepted. So I'll give you that range, 120, 30, all the way up to 150, 60. And so anywhere in there, August, come see me, and I'll tell you a little bit more specifically. Final questions? Yes. How many sixth graders apply? How many sixth graders apply? We have several hundred sixth graders apply, easily. And so that's why when you hear these guys talk about this as a special place, it is. Because you work hard to get here, and we want you here, and we're going to hold on to you and do everything we can to keep you here. That means if your student, if your grades get a little too low, we want to do whatever we can to get them up to where you stay here. We're in the business of asking you to come here, and we take that, important, that seriously. That's a big change in your life. And so it's our job to do everything we can to keep you here. Great question. Yes. What grades do class have? Sixth grade through twelfth grade is this school. And so six, seven, eight is your middle school. And then as an eighth grader, you'll go through this bridging ceremony where you change over into a high school student. 
Even though you go in the same building, maybe some of the same classes, you bridge over into high school in your 8th grade year, and that's a fun time to be an 8th grade student. We treat you like you're uh, grown up once, or more grown, <laughs> when you get into that freshman year. Good question. Yes? What is Spirit Day? What is Spirit Day? <laughs> I mean, we have a lot of days. So you got a good question for that one? Good answer for that? What is Spirit Day? Are you referring to uh, dress code exceptions on that uniform? See, I, I told you you know about as much as I do. Uh, Spirit Day will be days that we designate here at the school that, to, that we let you wear something different than the uniform. Okay? And, and those will be communicated to you. School colors. Right, yeah. So, so we will learn as we go. And then, like I said, great question. Student convocation will be where we really crystallize what you can and can't do with uniforms. Final question. Who's got that last one? And it was you. His question is a very important one, and it was, if your grades get too low, will you be asked to leave? And every student who comes here at some point has come in my office, and I get to introduce myself, and I look at your grades, and I see how you're doing, and there are instances where I see students' grades are getting dangerously low. Like, for example, they might be failing uh, one of their elective classes, <coughs> like an art class, and they might be failing one of their core classes. The policy in classroom is that if a student fails one or more semesters, so I failed first semester art, <coughs> second semester one of my core classes, then that is a scenario where we begin to look and say, is this student going to be successful here next year? And then the next year, and the next year. And there are occasions where we have students go back to their home school. And what that means is, is it's some, and I've had this happen, where we ask the student to go back to their home school, and then they're free to reapply for the next year, and there are occasions where we will bring that student back here when we are sure that student's academically prepared. What we cannot do is let that student, as an example in an IV program, fail coursework, because when they get behind in that French 2 class, they have to go, back, go in and take French 3, and then French 4, and then French 5, and then French 6. And you see, when you've got that many of that one more language to take, and you fail one of those, it's very hard to get caught back up at class. And so that's the reason you see us hit so hard on Focus and work hard, and we're going to be there to help you. Best question of the night right there. Um, it's, it's a serious one, and it is something that we try to work on way in advance before you get to that point. Okay, Mr. Thank you, Scott. There's one other person I'd like to introduce. These packets together didn't go together magically. Barbara Bark Brockhouse put them all together for us. If y'all give her a hand. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.